Well, good morning. Welcome back to our daily devotion. This morning we're on Psalm number 71 as we work our way through the Psalms. Psalm number 71. Kind of surprising, kind of depressing in another sense that we've actually reached the point that we've reached Psalm number 71 since we began the COVID shutdown last March. Don't forget along the way, we also took a little detour away from the Psalms for a while. So in fact, we'd actually be a little further along had we not done that. But this morning we're in Psalm number 71. If you would, go ahead and get ready to read along with me, beginning at verse 1. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have learned or leaned from birth, before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been as a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. For if my enemies speak concerning me, those who watch for my life consult together and say, God has forsaken him. Pursue and seize him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. May my accusers be put to shame and consumed with scorn and disgrace. May they be covered who seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will praise yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim with your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Your righteousness, O oh God, reaches the high heavens. You have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? You have made me see many troubles and calamities, or ye who have made me see many troubles and calamities, will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. I will also praise you with a harp for your stead for your faithfulness, O oh my God. I will sing praises to you with a lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you, my soul also, which you have redeemed. And my tongue will talk of your righteousness or your righteous help all the day long, for they have been put to shame and disappointed who sought to do me hurt. Here we are in Psalm number 71. If you look at it, you'll notice there is no attribution. It doesn't say who the author is. So we don't know if it's David or Solomon or Moses or one of the other more common writers. But there are some things we can pick up from the psalm. One of those, of course, being that if you paid close attention, you might have noticed that the psalmist is describing what sounds like the old age advice of somebody at the end of their life. The psalmist is looking back over the years of God's mercy and favor. He's acknowledging what all God has done, and he's promising to tell other people about it. This psalm, for those of you who are senior citizens, the experienced adults here watching this, it's a good reminder for you, but even for those of you who are not older, but maybe you're in your middle ages or even a little younger, it's a good reminder for you as well that God calls all of us to take what we know and to share it with others. As I often tell students when we're talking about discipleship and training folks, I say we all fit into three categories at one time. All of us know somebody who knows more than us. All of us know somebody who knows less than us. And all of us know somebody who knows nothing about what of us know. And so the latter group, those who know nothing, those are the ones we need to evangelize and share our faith with, period. The first group, those who know more than us, are the ones that we need to make sure we sit under their teaching or their preaching to learn from them to grow in our faith and knowledge of the Lord. But that middle group, all of us know somebody who knows less than us. All of us know somebody who's not as experienced in the gospel. We know somebody who's not had the opportunity to be trained or mentored. All of us are called to do that for somebody else. Jesus commands us, right? Go and make disciples. 
That's more than do evangelism. That also includes teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Paul tells us, older men train up the young men. Older women train up the younger women. So whether you're 80 or 18, there's somebody you know more than. There's somebody that you have something that you could give them that would bless their lives and increase their knowledge of the Lord. That's what the psalmist here is talking about. He's at the end of his life. He's looking back and he's recognizing over and over God's hand of mercy in his life. And he's promising in the days that he has left, he'll share that knowledge with any and all who will listen. So let's notice the prayer here as we breeze through this psalm rather quickly in the next few moments. He begins as so many of the other psalms we've read do. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge Let me never be put to shame. So the struggle, people are watching for him, looking for him to falter, looking for him to fall, looking for him perhaps to die so they can move on without him. So in prayer, he says in verse two, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be a rock of refuge to which I continually come. Over and over, the psalmist, picking up on imagery we've seen elsewhere, God is his high tower. God is his strong rock. And he's praying that God would rescue him. In fact, he says that, rescue me, verse 4, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and the cruel. Why? Verse 5, because God is his hope, our only hope, our trust, even as the psalmist says, from our youth. The psalmist has known God for many years and is looking back and remembering throughout it all, God has been a blessing to him. He says, upon you I've leaned from before my birth, recognizing our dependence on God even in our very existence. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise then is continually of you. And then he goes on. I have been as a portent to many, a warning of look at how bad life can be, but you are my strong refuge. Almost reminds me, doesn't it, of you, of the book of Job, one who so many people have looked up to, and then when times go bad, they blame Job for all the situation. Job, this is on you. Don't you know that it's your fault? But he says, no, God is my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, with your glory all the day long. Don't cast me off in my old age. Don't forsake me when my strength is spent. Lord, my time is almost up. Let me finish strong. Don't let me finish as a failure. My enemies speak concerning me. They watch over and consult. They say God has forsaken him. There's none to deliver him. Oh, God, verse 12, don't be far from me. Let them be wrong. Not because I want to take credit, but I want them to see how good and great you are. My accusers may be put to shame. He wants them to scorn and disgrace. They covered him to return on them. But he keeps coming back to God. Notice he's not focused on the circumstances. The circumstances force him to focus on God. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more. My mouth will tell the righteous acts of your deeds of salvation all the day. For the day, for their number is past my knowledge. God has been so gracious to this psalmist that he can't even recount all the times God has blessed him, all the times God has shown him favor and mercy. And so he's crying out saying, Lord, I've got so much more to tell. It's almost as though he's begging for one more rescue so that he can tell again to the audiences just how good God has been. Oh God, from my youth, verse 17, you've taught me and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh Lord God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Our prayer needs to be not that God simply would rescue us, but that God would rescue us and use our lives, our testimony, our suffering, if need be, for his glory. And so when you pray, pray not only will God's will be done, pray not only in honesty that God would rescue you from whatever situation you're in, but pray that God would give you the opportunity to bless somebody else who maybe is going through the same thing, maybe going through the worst things and even that. They need to hear about God's love. Maybe you're the one God's going to use to tell them that. After all, verse 19, your righteousness, O God, reaches the high heavens. You who have done great things, O God, who is like you. You've made me see many troubles and calamities. He knows God could have stopped them, but God permitted them. But he also knows in verse 20 that God will revive him again. 
From the depths of the earth you will bring me up again. Notice, that's not a promise to rescue in this lifetime. It's not a promise to make your life easy in your final days. In fact, revive me again means to bring me life again. The depths of the earth is the tomb. He's praying that God will one day raise him from the dead. He's moving from the present life to the eternal life. You'll increase my greatness. You'll comfort me again. I will praise you with a harp for your steadfastness, your faithfulness. I'll sing praises to you with a lyre. He's going to worship God no matter what, whether in this lifetime or the next. My lips, he says in verse 23, shout for joy when I sing praises to you, my soul also, which you have redeemed. And my tongue, and here's the admonition for all of us, my tongue will talk of your righteous help all the day. Your friends, your neighbors, your family shouldn't be able to shut you up when you start talking about God. There's so much you could tell them and I pray there's so much you want to tell them. Otherwise, what's the purpose in rescuing you? But God does what he does for his glory. May he do it again, and may you give him all the praise for it. Pray to God, and then praise God always.